Hi everyone, this is me, Hamza6951, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about a day in the life of an engineering consultant. Uh, I'm going to show you how professional life is after university, talk a bit about university, my qualifications, and the projects I'm working on as an ECNI consultant. Uh, this video took a while to make because of just the general routine that I'm in and the work that I've been busy with. So I hope you get something useful out of this video. I really enjoyed working, this, working on this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So just like any other in a life of video, this is me showing you my morning routine. That's me waking up after snoozing my alarm for about 10 times because uh, I slept late last night because of bad life choices and there I am making my way to the toilet 20 minutes later Once I'm all dressed up, what I'll do is I'll wear my shoes Then I will start to pack my bag So because I stay in a hotel one day um, only or one night I will just pack some essential items, so some extra clothing um, I take my personal laptop with me just for some um, watching some shows when I'm done after work um, and uh, yeah just just make my bed and then make my way towards the door and off we go Six hours later. Hi everyone. So I just completed my work day and now I'm on my way to my hotel. So today was a good first day. Uh, when I get to my hotel, I'll tell you a bit about what I worked on today and how my day was on site. Here I am in my hotel room. It is nice and cozy. Just love the vibe of this place already. And then I have a beautiful view to look outside of. I don't know if the camera is focusing well, but this hotel is placed in the most beautiful part of the city. And I've been here a couple of times and every single time I come here, I just can't get enough of the beauty of this place. So I just settled in my hotel room and I just came out here for a walk and you can see this place is just beautiful. There's running waters, there's birds chirping. This is like the ultimate peaceful environment you can be in after work. So I just settled down in my room and uh, let's talk about how my day was and just give you a brief introduction about uh, my qualifications and what I do. So. I'm an electrical and electronic engineer, just to give you a bit of background about my education. So I did my bachelor's in electrical and electronic engineering from City University of London. Um, and I then completed my master's in power electronics and renewables in, from Imperial College of London. So in total, it took four years because it was a UK degree in the UK. And straight after I graduated, I got a job um, in an engineering consultancy as an ECNI engineer. So ECNI stands for Electrical Control and Instrumentation Engineer. And uh, I work specifically in the nuclear and power sector within the company um, as an electrical control and instrumentation engineer. So our job is to work with different clients, nuclear clients across the UK and provide them with our um, expertise in consulting. And over the past few years, I worked on a bunch of projects. This is one of the beauties about working for a consultancy is you work with many different clients. And a consultancy it is different in a sense from a manufacturing industry because you're not really creating a product, you are actually providing your expertise to the clients. So the first project that I'm working on is actually a site-based role uh, where I am required on site two days a week. So in the UK, we have quite a lot of flexibility of working from home, working on site, because even when you are on site, there may not be a reason for you to actually go into the site, into the building areas where they have 
the equipment that you need to look at. So in those days, I would just work from home. So today I'm on site. This is why I'm staying in a hotel room. And I usually come to site every week um, for two days, which is usually what I like. It's, uh, it provides me with quite a good work-life balance and just being in different hotels around the city is, is always the best thing. So what I'm doing now is called a de-planting engineer or de-cabling engineer. So we work as a contractor for a decommissioning company and they are experts in decommissioning. So my role currently as a de-planting engineer is to go into these buildings that are contaminated radiologically, survey the electrical equipment, look at the systems over there, look at the cables, um, and then create, according to the survey that we do, we create a schedule of how we're going to get rid of that equipment. Uh, once that schedule um, is created to get rid of that equipment, we then take that proposal onto our committee and they give us approvals and um, they get all the funding that we need to get the work done. And because we are engineers, we don't really do any of the physical works. We then hand that specification to a contractor, like an electrical contractor, and they will come on site and actually do the physical works for us. So the physical works would include just cutting the cables before the building is either demolished or if it's going to be used to store um, waste, nuclear waste. It's to get those building ready, buildings ready so the contractors can come and um, build a system where they will store waste in those buildings. And it's quite interesting because it's all electrical. It's not control and instrumentation related. In the past few years, I did work on a lot of CNI, which is control and instrumentation, but this is purely electrical. There's parts of CNI in it, but mostly electrical work. And I'm learning a lot because there's a lot of electrical installation and uh, things you have to do which has to be according to specification and, and UK standards. Uh, so it's quite an interesting role and I'm really enjoying it. So let's talk about my second role now. Uh, so the second project is actually the robotics project, which I'm working with my own company. Since our company is quite new to robotics, we're uh, trying to develop these robotics capabilities within the company so we can actually win work for the clients. It is also in the decommissioning sector. So our aim is to have these robots that we're working with and those robots for, be, for them to be able to actually go into contaminated areas and perform some tasks that uh, are just too dangerous for the humans to perform. Uh, most of these would be kind of like sort and segregate op operations. So for example, like a robot will pick up a pile of radioactive waste or nuclear waste. It will then have a camera that will scan the waste and specify its classification. And then according to the waste's classification, it will then sort it out into different boxes. That is just one of the things that's called sort and segregate. Uh, the other one is just generally we're, what we're doing is we have a physical robot and then we are going to make a digital twin of that robot into a computer software. And we are currently using Unreal Engine to do that, which is quite interesting because this role is mostly software specific because you're learning C++, you're learning how to use Unreal Engine. So our aim is to have an Unreal simulation with which we can actually connect the physical robot and then be able to control it using like a glove box or certain things such as a hand. So you have, you'll be wearing like a glove and then you'll be able to, in virtual reality, just grab objects and then the physical robot in real life would actually do the same thing. It will mimic those moments. So it is quite an ambitious project, uh, project and we're working with a couple of companies across uh, to achieve this goal. And uh, I'm really enjoying it because I'm learning a lot and it's just, it's just something totally different to my electrical engineering role, which is another part of working in a consultancy is that you can work on different projects. So whereas one project that I'm working on is purely electrical, this is purely tech and software engineering, software development type role. I think one of the pros of working in the nuclear industry is that you get exposure to a lot of different things because it is quite a new industry which is still developing and a lot of people have doubts about nuclear. They think it's unsafe. So if you have any doubts, drop them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and uh, I would say the cons are that it's highly regulated, which I think it's good, it should be, but there are certain things that you just can't do. And you have to be very careful about who you talk to and you know, the type of things you talk about, uh, talk to with people about your work. So that is one thing you have to be very careful of. And then. If you are from a country that is not that safe, you actually have to, you know, let people know that, you know, you'll be traveling. So you have to be security briefed. You have to, uh, you know, make sure you don't do certain things in that country. You don't talk about your work. They may think that you don't really do anything interesting, but you know, deep inside that, you know, some 
what you're working on is way cooler because you actually can't talk about those things. It just makes it even even better. <laughs> Basically, that's how I think about it. But yeah, I mean, these are the pros and cons of uh, working in the nuclear industry. And now let's talk about the engineering industry in general and what happens when you get into professional life and if you want to do a career change. Or... So let's talk about a career change first. There's a misconception between people in industries where they think that once you have actually done a degree in engineering, you get to stick or you have to stick to that degree for the rest of your life. That is not true. If you work in a consultancy or if you work in any other company and you want to change roles, so for example, I'll give you an example of some of my colleagues who went from an engineering background into software development. It was quite easy for them to change if they were working within the same company and they were hired internally. So what I would say is just because you have a degree in, for example, if you're a civil engineer, but then later on working in the civil industry for maybe two years, you decide you don't really like that. And maybe it was a project uh, that you worked on that, you know, required you to do some programming and you really enjoyed it. And you were like, wait, this is really interesting. I actually want to do this long term or I actually want to steer my career into the software development role or tech roles. It's never too late because actually if you have worked on that software role, that should give you enough experience to actually talk about it in a role or in an interview. It's not hard shifting to the industry because once you've done that project, you can talk about that. That's your knowledge. Now you just need to persuade the employer that anything that comes in your way that is new, you are happy to learn it and you will be happy to progress through this role and you know develop further within the team. That's all they want to hear about. Most of the time, employers just want to hear, you know, how keen you are to actually get into the role and learn. So I, I know a couple of people from my company who moved from a mechanical engineering background to a software development background. So people who doubt themselves, who, who basically, are, you know, are a victim of imposter syndrome. I would like to say to you that just trust your instincts, be confident and, you know, just know that you will be able to achieve it if you put your you know mind to it and hard work to it. So it is never late to change industries. Uh, it's always possible. Let's talk about programming. So in my robotics project, I do a lot of programming and uh, I remember I started learning programming when I was doing my GCSEs back in the days, it was a long time ago now. And then later on in university, we did some modules on Python, we did some modules on Java, and then some C-sharp. So we did hardware programming, uh, which was using Arduinos to actually create devices. So we created this autonomous vehicle that would move on its own and avoid objects using ultrasonic sensors. So it was, it had kind of a control and instrumentation built into it because you're using sensors to get information and then you're using, you know, the data based on the sensor input to actually make things work, which is basically what control and instrumentation is in a nutshell. You are using some sort of feedback loop or an open loop system to actually achieve what you want in a system. Later on, when I actually started working with the engineering consultancy, I did work on a couple of projects where I had to use programming language such as Python to automate a couple of mundane tasks that they were doing. It is working on those software roles that, you know, made me interested to work on something long-term in software. And that's when I found the robotics project. So in a nutshell, this is a day in the life of an engineering consultant. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got some valuable information out of it. Remember, you can always do a career change and you can always make a difference. Never think that what you're doing, even if it is small, will not help the company in any way or, you know, uh, it will make a bigger difference. It will make a bigger difference and you will feel happy about it once you start to see those things and develop further in your organization. So yeah, I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you got useful information out of it. If you want me to make more of these videos, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions about uh, working in the nuclear industry or working in an engineering sector, whether in a consultancy, again, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. But uh, until next time.